Uh, let me open this section, which is dedicated to upcoming period of Horizon Europe, which definitely provides uh, new opportunities to extend our international cooperation and, of course, gain financial support uh, for our project from European sources. Looking backward uh, towards uh, age 2020, we are very glad that uh, our researchers were among successful applicants. Currently, uh, we have three ERC projects and two ERC CZ projects running in our faculty. New applications for the top class uh, research supports are handed uh, in each year and I'm really glad to acknowledge University Pipeline, which was established by Professor Drahoš and which provides uh, really uh, efficient and great uh, support to ERC applicant. Of course, I should not forget our local representatives of the pipeline, which are Klara Sobotíková and Lida, so uh, Lida Součková. And I want to thank them for their activity. Besides ERC projects, um, uh, faculty scientists participated in 13 cooperative uh, projects. And one of the projects uh, within the twinning uh, is coordinated from here. It's a project uh, Microbiome, which is uh, supervised by Professor Tahezi, and you will have the opportunity to hear his presentation later on during this afternoon. The overall budget uh, of uh, H 2020 projects uh, for our faculty was approximately 220 million Czech crowns. I hope uh, that upcoming period of Horizon Europe can be even more successful and uh, we can stimulate more of uh, our excellent researchers for searching and applying for funding from this framework. And I also believe that uh, gradual improvement uh, in administrative support uh, can increase their success rate. Of course, uh, comments and suggestions uh, for improvement uh, from faculty public are highly welcome. Finally, uh, let me thank organizers of uh, this webinar of this meeting, especially Clara, Lida and Tomáš. You will meet all of them this afternoon. And of course, uh, all the speakers who uh, agreed to uh, spend their time with us and share their experience and expertise. I hope uh, you will enjoy this meeting and you will find it informative and useful. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sokup, for your uh, 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 motivational uh, introduction. And now I, I would ask uh, uh, I would like to ask my uh, dear colleague uh, Lida if she could start her her presentation about Horizon Europe, please. Thank you, Clara. I'm now starting to share my screen. So, can you see my presentation? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you for the introduction and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lida Součkova. I work part time at the project management department of the Faculty of Science. And in my presentation, I will try to give you a quick overview of the new program Horizon Europe. I'll uh, say what the program is. I will run through its structure. Uh, say a few words about the international projects carried out by international consortia. And finally, I will mention the funding and tender opportunities portal. So what is Horizon Europe? It's a European Union's framework program for research and innovation. It should take place in the years uh, between 2021 and 2027. It's a successor of uh, the previous program Horizon 2020, uh, which uh, some of you might know. And the overall budget for Horizon Europe uh, for its whole duration 
is approximately 95.5 billion euro. As far as I know, formal adoption of this program is still ongoing, but it should be finished approximately in April of this year. It's a centrally managed program, which means that when you are applying for money from this program, you are competing against proposals from all over Europe, and the program is managed directly from Brussels. Or, um, all member states of the European Union uh, participate in this program, and there will probably be other countries which are not member states, but will participate uh, in the program as so-called associated countries. But again, as far as I know, uh, negotiations with these countries are still ongoing. You can see here uh, links to more information. Uh, don't worry, you will receive uh, my presentation afterwards. So if you are interested, you will be able to use these links. And now let's have a look at the structure of the program. It consists of three pillars and the horizontal part. Uh, in the first pillar, excellent science, we have the European Research Council, ERC, which uh, funds uh, high-risk, high-gain uh, research, giving grants to excellent individual researchers and their ambitious research ideas. Uh, it funds, uh, it can, can fund uh, any field of research operating on the so-called bottom-up principle. And ERC has uh, kind of uh, special status within the Horizon program. And as these grants are highly relevant for our researchers, we plan to make a separate information event just on ERC grants uh, to be held at our faculty. If you are interested, you can follow our news. Then we have here the Maria Sklodowska Kiri actions. The goal of this part is to train new and better researchers for European science. And this should be achieved by international mobility, meaning that the supported scientist must uh, for a while leave uh, his or her current country of residence and do for a while their research in a different country to gather more experience. And it's uh, prestigious not only to be the supported uh, mobile researcher, but also to host such a researcher in your research team. Then we have the part uh, which uh, should uh, support development of European research infrastructures. Research infrastructure is a tool, service, or facility that is offered uh, to research community. And those of you who are involved in running uh, such research infrastructure and in the same time uh, involved in international cooperation with uh, other similar infrastructures in Europe, those of you might find this part interesting. Now we are moving to the second pillar, global challenges and uh, European industrial co competitiveness. In this part, uh, support is given to specific technologies, development of specific technologies or solutions to uh, specific problems which are regarded by the European Union as important for our society or industry. We have here six clusters co uh, covering different uh, thematic areas uh, in the cluster uh, focused on health, for our researchers, there might be possibly relevant, for example, topics on environmental and social health determinants or on cancer and diseases or personalized medicine. Then in the second cluster, culture, creativity and inclusive uh, society, there might be interesting topics on uh, cultural heritage or on migration. Uh, then there is the cluster on security, where among many other topics should be also some topics on disaster resilience. Uh, cluster four, digital industry, digital industry and space. There, again, among other topics might be some on advanced materials relevant for our chemists or space, including earth observation, uh, interesting for our geographers. Then there is the cluster climate, energy and mobility. And finally, cluster food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, environment. And topics from this part will be discussed in more detail in the following presentation by our national contact point. 
pillar two, I will also briefly mention missions. Uh, missions are a new feature of Horizon Europe. These are ambitious, measurable goals, which are regarded as highly relevant for European citizens, and they should be implemented within uh, the pillar two clusters. As far as I understood, uh, there should be some topics flagged as belonging to a certain mission, but more about missions will be also said in the following presentation. And I will also mention uh, partnerships. These partnerships bring together European Commission on one side and uh, private or public stakeholders uh, in certain areas on the other. These stakeholders, companies, technological platforms or uh, authorities uh, like ministries uh, of uh, the member states, uh, these stakeholders by, by taking part in these partnerships gain some influence on the politics on where the money goes, but on the other hand, they must uh, contribute their own money into their participation in the partnerships. And again, more will be said in the following presentations. In the second pillar, we have also joint research center, which is, as far as I know, an in-house uh, research uh, institution of the European Commission. Then we have here a third pillar, uh, Innovative Europe, which should stimulate the market creating breakthroughs. And I think that it's more relevant for innovative companies, researchers who are really developing new technologies. Then we have here the widening participation and spreading excellence. Goal of this part is to increase research performance of uh, so-called widening countries, which is for example, also Czechia. Uh, most of the time the projects in this part are uh, have to be coordinated by an institution from uh, a widening country. Uh, it funds any research field, but often doesn't fund research costs as such, but rather personal costs, mobility, training, organization work of workshops or conferences. And then there is a small part on reforming uh, research and innovation systems. Here are topics, for example, on citizen science, responsible research and technology or similar. Quick look at the budget distribution. You can see that more than one half of the budget goes to the clusters within the pillar two. Nice part of the money goes to European Research Council. And for us, it's also interesting that widening participation should get uh, approximately 3% of the budget, which is approximately twice uh, uh, as much uh, than was in the previous program, Horizon 2020. And now I would like to say something about the international projects, so-called projects carried out by international consortia. You might have noticed that I was saying all the time, here you can find topics on this, here you can find topics on that. Uh, the, in the most typical uh, projects, the projects must focus on a given topic that is set uh, by European Commission, uh, who defines the scope of the project to be funded and its expected impact. For each given, it's also defined the type of project and the deadline. List of these topics and their descriptions and uh, all other information uh, is published in document called work program. Uh, the current work program specifying topics for this and the following year should be formally uh, published in April, but the drafts have uh, already leaked online. That's where I took uh, some examples from. And uh, I will also mention that the types of these uh, top-down projects that are most relevant for us are uh, research and innovation actions, which support uh, applied research, innovation actions, which should bring a promising concept closer to the market, and coordination and support actions, uh, which uh, usually don't uh, fund research as such, but for example, should uh, map existing knowledge on a certain topic or build, build a platform bringing together stakeholders uh, who are interested in that topic. Funding rate is 100%. 
uh, with the exception of innovation actions where uh, for-profit entities get uh, only 70 percent of their costs funded but uh, non-profit entities like universities like us uh, get 100 percent even in innovation actions and it very often works in such a way that uh, for one topic set by the european commission only one or two projects uh, get funded uh, these projects are carried out by international consortia. Formally, the minimal requirement is three partners from three different countries for research and innovation actions and innovation actions, and uh, just one uh, entity for coordination and support actions. But in real life, most of the time, these projects are carried out by a large consortia, uh, co um, uh, of uh, from 10 up to 20 partners or even more. It really depends on scope of the topic because all actors that are needed to carry out the task must be involved in the project. Uh, complementary partners are needed. Uh, in the consortia, there are not just researchers providing the knowledge, but there should be already in the project uh, taking part uh, the potential users of the results, like industry, hospitals, farmers, depending on the topic. You might need some special partners, like uh, someone focusing on communication or on ethical aspects of the research that's being done. And sometimes the topic uh, explicitly requires uh, inclusion of some partners, like small or medium-sized enterprises or of uh, non-European partners. And it's obvious that this requires really experienced coordinator to lead such a diverse group of partners. But being just uh, one partner doing your task with the, the, within the project shouldn't be too difficult, too demanding. And these are really the most common uh, projects in Horizon, uh, not only in the clusters of the pillar two, but also in many other parts of the program. And finally, a few words about the funding and tender opportunities portal. This is an online portal where you can find all the legal documents, including, for example, the work programs while, uh, when they are officially published. For each topic, you can find there its scope, expected results, type of project deadline, updates, all information. You use this online uh, portal to submit your application, sign the grant agreement if you are successful, and then manage your project, submit reports, consult your project officer. Everything is paperless and online. To use the portal, you uh, as a person, you need EU log login, which consists of your email address, name and surname, and every institution that participates needs to be registered with a PIC code. Our institution is already registered, so when you participate as a researcher from Faculty of Science, you use the PIC code of our university. And last but not least, you can also use this portal to register yourself into expert database so that you can be selected by project officers to evaluate the proposals that are submitted that are applying for funding. To create such a uh, profile takes some time. You need to fill in your education, expertise, languages, and so on. It's important to mention experience outside academia. It's also good to update your profile regularly. For example, when there is a topic that nicely fits your expertise, but for whatever reason you know you are not going to apply, then it's a good time to update your expertise and use some keywords or phrases from the description of that topic to increase your chances of being selected as evaluator. And when you evaluate this proposal, it, uh, these uh, proposals, these applications, it's perfect training because it gives you first-hand experience how evaluation works and how a good proposal should look like, which is perfect training for you to once apply yourself and hopefully get funded. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Lida, for your uh, very informative and uh, very well structured uh, the presentation. Uh, now to proceed, I would uh, ask uh, you, dear, dear um, Mrs. Cechova, uh, uh, 
uh, if you could start your representation, Ms. Sitchikova is a, a national contact point at the uh, technology geology center and uh, you can uh, you can no, contact her with a uh, question about the, the cluster six thank you uh, thank you very much uh, i hope you can hear me well let yes. me uh, share uh, my presentation So uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to this very useful seminar, and especially thank you, Rida, for your great, really great uh, introduction to the Horizon Europe, which allows me to concentrate on environmental issues mainly. Uh, regarding uh, structure of my presentation, I will start with the most relevant uh, cluster six, as it was mentioned. I will briefly uh, mention also cluster five, then missions and partnerships. And last but not least, I will tell you something about the services which us as a technology center of the Academy of Sciences can offer you in case you decide to submit proposal to Horizon Europe uh, program. Uh, typical uh, collaborative research uh, projects are submitted into pillar two. And the majority of environmental topics uh, are concentrated in cluster six, food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. Uh, this cluster was created by merging uh, two previously independent societal challenges of Horizon 2020 project, uh, program. It was uh, societal challenge two focused on agriculture and societal challenge five uh, focused on environment. Now it is one uh, quite large uh, cluster. Uh, I don't want to bother you too much uh, with uh, this uh, uh, strategic documents and initiatives, but uh, in my opinion, it's important to stress that in Horizon Europe, as in previous framework programs, uh, it is necessary to look at uh, the political uh, context because the results of your projects should have somehow support implementation of different policies, initiatives, strategies, etc. So it is important, especially in the section focused on impact, to show which goals uh, will be met by your projects. So all of you know, for example, United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, one of the most important drivers of uh, Horizon Europe, but uh, we have uh, many other uh, documents, European Green Deal strategy, uh, EU biodiversity strategy, chemical strategy for sustainability, bird directive, water framework directive, EU forest strategy, depending on the thematic area. So it is really necessary to bear in mind somewhere and in case you need uh, our support in uh, finding the suitable or necessary information on this issue don't hesitate to contact us as well now um the underlying paradigm let's say uh, of cluster six is a need for a transformative change of the eu economy society which aims at reduction of environmental degradation on helping and reversing of the biodiversity decline and better management of natural resources and of course uh, ensuring of uh, water and uh, water supply. Uh, six uh, impacts were defined regarding this overarching aim focusing on climate neutrality, biodiversity, ecosystems, circle management uh, of um, natural resources, food and nutrition security uh, on rural, coastal and urban areas or innovative governance models. And these impacts will be hopefully met uh, through projects funded in seven destinations, uh, which I will describe in more details uh, later on. But firstly, let me uh, introduce you the most important, in my opinion, document which you need to know before uh, submitting uh, any proposal. Lida already mentioned work uh, programs. 
uh, work program as in Horizon 2020 uh, will be prepared for two years. Of course, with the exception of the last one, which will be for uh, three years, as Horizon Europe is for seven years uh, uh, duration. At the moment, uh, third uh, final, probably final uh, draft version is in revision. It's still under development, but as it was said, it is already <laughs> uh, possible to Google it, for example, at Science and Business uh, Journal web pages. Uh, still some minor uh, changes can occur, but what is more or less clear that the calls will be open in the middle of April. There will be separate call for each destination, one uh, for uh, each destination in 2021, in the first year of, uh, of the uh, program, and one or two calls in 2022, in the next year. As far as the deadlines, uh, they will be at the beginning of September uh, of uh, this year. And uh, in this um, first call, there will be only one stage evaluation. So there will be only one deadline for the whole uh, projects. As far as the next year, 2022, some of project uh, calls will be one stage, some of them will be two stage calls. So it depends. On, on this depends uh, also the deadlines. Uh, in the middle of Febu February 2022, there will be a deadline for one stage call and first stage of two stage calls. And in the beginning of September, there will be second stage of two stage calls. Uh, it is important to mention that the whole work program for these two years, next two years, has more than 500 pages. So really. Uh, a uh, big uh, document and um, so as to make your life a little bit easier. I am at the moment finishing a table uh, covering all topics of uh, cluster six. Um, this is uh, some preview how this uh, table uh, looks like. There is uh, all topics titles are listed here together with the uh, information on instruments which uh, should be used for implementation of the topic. Then we have the recommended, uh, but, uh, uh, recommended um, contribution of the European Union per one project. We have the budget of all of the whole topic. So it's quite easy to uh, calculate the estimated number of uh, projects which will be uh, supported in uh, one particular topic. So as soon as calls will be officially uh, published at uh, Funding and Enter Opportunities Portal, I will add the links to this table. Uh, so you will be uh, redirected to all necessary information on um, Funding and Enter Opportunities Portal. So I hope it will be uh, useful for you. Now we are moving to probably the most interesting part of the presentation uh, to the destinations. If I'm not mistaken, there are around 99 uh, topics for the 2021 only. So it's not possible to uh, list uh, all uh, the uh, topics in this presentation. So I can give you some, I don't know, rough sketch of the situation, so as you know what uh, it's possible to expect. So the first uh, destination focus on biodiversity and ecosystem services uh, brings uh, topics focus, for example, uh, on um, biodiversity genomics efforts uh, aimed at identification of all biodiversity. Then we have topics uh, focus on uh, monitoring and inventory of endangered species on impact of stressors, mainly in uh, sea and marine ecosystems. We have economics of nature-based solution on uh, topics uh, focus on ecosystem restoration in freshwater ecosystem and again in uh, marine ecosystems. 
Then there is uh, some group of topics focused on biodiversity in primary production, for example, on crop breeding. Uh, then we have uh, some uh, topics which should help uh, decision makers and politicians to uh, make some uh, decisions in the area of biodiversity and ecosystems. So it's a topic focused on decision uh, making tools. Uh, as for the destination two, it is focused on food systems from primary production to consumption. There are topics dealing with uh, sustainable and organic farming and aquacultures. Uh, then we have uh, topics uh, focused on uh, digitalization of farming systems or on uh, tackling of outbreaks of plant pests. There are topics uh, regarding uh, animal diseases or animal welfare, food safety issues, microbes for healthy food, but there are also topics dealing with the uh, um, sustainable and dietary behavior. And as in uh, previous framework programs, there are also some topics uh, supporting international cooperation. In this case, it is uh, uh, topic on EU-China cooperation regarding pest management in agriculture. Destination 3 is focused on circular economy and bioeconomy sectors, the systemic solutions in circular cities and regions will be supported here, or innovative solutions to overpackaging and single-use plastics, uh, we have uh, non-plan uh, biomass for industrial application or unlocking of algae potential in so-called blue economy. We are moving to destinations for clean environment and zero pollution. There are topics uh, focused on regional nitrogen and phosphorus uh, load reduction or on diffuse pollution in urban water runoffs, on pollution is seas. We have also uh, environmental performance in bio-based sectors. It means textiles, paper, woodworking uh, industries, for example. Then we have certification schemes for bio-based systems or bioremediation uh, and revitalization for soil, sediment, and water. Uh, destination five is focused on land, ocean, and water for climate change, you know, climate action. Here we have uh, topics concerning understanding and monitoring of water resources availability on key polar processes driving climate change. There is a group or emphasis on forestry. Uh, including agroforestry, old growth forest, and again, uh, international cooperation uh, between EU and China uh, will focus on the resilience of forest. Uh, destination six, focused on the rural coastal and urban communities, is the smallest one in uh, cluster six as uh, regards uh, budget. There are topics uh, focused on um, contribution of uh, rural uh, communities to some kind of social transition, on rural diversity and innovation, on urban food system um, policies or solutions for remote farming and forestry. And uh, the last destination seven focused on environment, uh, innovative governance, environmental observations and digital solutions is on the other hand, uh, has the highest number of topics. Uh, I can mention only a few of them, for example, uh, furthering food system science and federating of research, researchers, regional governance models in bioeconomy, uh, education on the bioeconomy, environmental observations to monitor uh, critical biodiversity and ecosystem losses, uh, modeling of land use and land use management, data economy in the country, agriculture, etc. So it was a very a brief introduction into uh, cluster six topics for 2021. I somehow tried to summarize it in the following uh, table. Uh, I can uh, show you some 
quite, in my opinion, positive and important um, features. For example, in destination one in biodiversity, there is the highest number of research and innovation actions. So the research path uh, or research activities should uh, prevail in these, um, in these proposals. On the other hand, we would expect it uh, that in circular uh, economy destination, there are no research and innovation actions and there are um, uh, dominating innovation actions which would bring uh, the solutions to the, to the problems. And uh, again, in uh, destination seven, focused on governments and some kind of networking and preparation of some agendas or something like that, we would expect the highest number of uh, coordination and support actions. Uh, for 2021, the highest budget is in biodiversity, biodiversity destination one, but in general, I, I'm not mistaken, the, highest uh, proportion of budget will go to destination two focused on uh, food. And I would like also mention two co-fund uh, actions or type of instrument, and I will come back to them in the part focused on partnerships. So it was uh, for cluster six. Now we are moving to cluster five. Uh, again, in this cluster, even more than in a cluster six, uh, it's an example of merging of uh, previously independent areas. The big societal challenge focused on energy and even a big uh, societal challenge focused on transport mobility were merged together with climate to one cluster five with the clear aim uh, transformation of economy, industry, and society towards climate neutrality by 2050. We have eight destinations uh, in this cluster focused on different type of um, uh, energy uh, supply, uh, energy sources uh, on uh, different uh, transport modes, on batteries, cities. And there is also one destination focused on climate sciences and responses. We have nine topics for 2021, focused on greenhouse gas fluxes, on uh, CO2 removal technologies, again, on the role of circular economy, on economic methods for decision-making in climate um, actions, on standardization of climate services and for me a little bit strangely in this uh, cluster, there is also restoration of natural wetlands, for example. Uh, up to now, uh, I have no information about deadlines, but opening uh, of the calls should be again in uh, April. We are moving to missions. Uh, as Lida already mentioned, it's a new uh, characteristics, new part of uh, Horizon Europe. Uh, mission approach was introduced by Professor Marina Mazzucato in her report uh, for the European Commission quite time ago. And uh, she mentioned several times in this uh, first moon landing as an example of really inspirational uh, mission. I'm not sure if Mission of Horizon Europe has the same feeling, but okay. Uh, should be some portfolio of action across disciplines, uh, should be bold and uh, with measurable goal. And what is important, uh, they should be relevant for the majority of European citizens. Five mission areas were uh, defined and with the help of uh, mission boards, we have one Czech representative in mission board for soil, uh, Emil Cincella. Uh, with the mission boards and other experts um, in each mission area, the mission itself uh, was defined. Missions uh, which uh, should be um, achieved by 2030, they are, some of them are really ambitious. For example, in climate change mission area, the mission is to have 100 demonstration of resilience across uh, European communities. 
in cancer mission area, more than 3 million uh, lives should be saved, living longer and better. In soil uh, mission, more than, or at least, 75% uh, of soil should be healthy and able to provide essential ecosystem services. In cities, again, there is a showcase demonstration of at least 100 European cities in uh, transformation towards climate neutrality. And in case of healthy oceans and waters, uh, there is a less uh, precise uh, mission, simply a restoration of our oceans and waters. Of course, some set of indicators and um, time uh, lines should be defined, but uh, as for the implementation, it's not too clear uh, at the moment. The implementation process is in preparation, which is uh, sure that the missions will have specific core program. And at the moment, there are some uh, coordination support action for each mission. Uh, which should serve uh, for laying uh, foundation for the implementation, support for regional and local authorities in preparation, because uh, for mission, some kind of, let's say, national hubs should be uh, prepared. So it's probably <laughs> uh, everything I can say about missions. So you, on the web page, of course, you can uh, find the uh, uh, reports and documents uh, as regarding uh, the definition of missions and uh, their characteristics. We are moving to partnerships. Again, I uh, have no time to go too much into details, but it's I'd like to tell you some basic effects and more uh, the most relevant ones. Um, in uh, Horizon 2020, uh, there was some criticism regarding too complicated structure of partnership, some feeling of close clubs, uh, let's say, in some cases. So uh, new architecture was presented in Horizon Europe, more simplified, as it was mentioned. Uh, there were uh, around 100 um, partnerships. Now, uh, 49 were proposed in five thematic areas. I have listed uh, partnerships which are relevant for cluster six, for the environmental um, uh, topics. And uh, in red, you have two co-funded uh, co uh, partnerships, which were mentioned in uh, in the table I showed you, and they are present in work program for 2021. Uh, consortia uh, will be formed by program owners, program managers, policy makers with financial and or uh, in-kind uh, contributions. Uh, the activities in this area will include uh, biodiversity monitoring or water availability monitoring, policy advising, and of course, uh, call for research projects. And um, the scientists researchers, you will be able to submit your uh, projects to these uh, calls, which will be opened under this co-fund consortia. Uh, what is good, I hope it really uh, will be realized that uh, Czech Republic should be part of both of these uh, uh, co-funds partnership. Uh, Ministry of Environment should be responsible at the political level and uh, this co fund should be administrated by a technology agency. So I think it's uh, uh, the most important information, of course, on our web pages, uh, we recommend you to follow also other types of partnership, especially co-program in which, uh, again, the calls for proposal should be open with the uh, same rules as in Horizon Europe uh, program. I am uh, going to the end of my presentation. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our services. Uh, one department of Technology Center of the Academy of Sciences, NICER, it means National Information uh, Center for European Research, uh, offer uh, free of charge uh, the individual consultation and assistance to proposers. At the COVID times, it's of course by email and phone or um, uh, video conferences mainly. 
We are organizing uh, different information events, uh, usually uh, at the occasion of opening of calls, we organize thematic information events. Uh, at the beginning of uh, March, uh, there will be some information campaign. We, we uh, called it uh, on the horizon Europe with the um, presentation of all parts of uh, Horizon uh, Europe program. So you can register to this event. You have a link uh, at the bottom of the slide. Then we are organized uh, workshops and trainings uh, very often on request of research organizations. So we can really prepare it tailor made on thematic, uh, um, thematic issues which are interesting for the given organization. We have already, I think, yeah, eight different modules in our um, training uh, workshop called How to Approach Horizon 2020. Now it will be transformed to How to Approach Horizon Euro program. This series of modules is organized twice a year with uh, uh, different modules focused on uh, uh, financial issues, legal issues, on um, uh, Maria Skodowska key reactions on uh, uh, support of um, small and medium enterprises or simply how to write uh, a proposal. Uh, we organize annual conference check days for European research. And of course, we published uh, quite a number of uh, articles or um, uh, journals or in our Vademecum edition. You may know this in the or at, uh, in the uh, right corner, the red uh, uh, book is about financial and administrative issues of Horizon 2020. Again, we are planning to prepare some similar kind of edition for Horizon Europe, and it's in Czech language. And also we monitor and analyze uh, Czech participation in Horizon uh, 2020 or previous framework programs. And last, uh, last uh, I, of course, uh, must mention uh, our web pages. We administrate Horizon 2020 web page, but uh, under preparation, there is a new web page, Horizon Europe. I think in April, it should be already available. Now it's in test uh, version. And again, there will be more information, but the classical one will be um, for sure there, news, uh, events, uh, e-learning. You will be able to set up uh, tailor made notifications. There'll be some section of success story, etc. So I think uh, it's everything from my part. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, I'm prepared to, to answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Ochekova, for your uh, very clear and very informative presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, and now uh, there is a, a time for a short uh, discussion. And I can see the first uh, question in the chat. Uh, maybe, uh, Mrs. Chikova, that's, that's right for you. <laughs> I would uh, read it. Uh, is a Czech Republic Take part of the animal health, health partnership in, in cluster six? And uh, if yes or no, what does it mean in practice for uh, Horizon applicants? Uh, thank you for your question. I must say, I'm not sure how is it at the moment. I can check it. I hopefully till the end of the event, I'll write the answer to the chat. I'm really not sure because the situation is evolving and uh, I have to, to check it if I uh, am able to find out more information. Sorry. OK. Uh, thank you for the, the, uh, the question. If there is not uh, any other uh, for now, I, I would have uh, one question for you. You may be Mrs. Ochekova. I wanted uh, to ask if you know uh, that uh, there, if there will be any any more uh, modification or uh, changes in the, the the rules, if there uh, they are uh, going to be maybe more 
flexible, made for the you know COVID situation. And so, uh, what do you think about uh, implementing uh, implementation, which might be a little bit more complicated for some activities? And so. Thank you. Uh, I am not sure if in connection with uh, COVID situation, it should be some uh, kind of uh, simplification in implementation as regards uh, timesheets and uh, some other, um, especially administrative uh, issues that will be one model uh, grant agreement only with different annexes for all um, programs, etc. So some kind of simplification should be here, but I'm not sure if uh, as regards this COVID, I'm not quite sure what do you mean exactly, uh, because mm -hmm. I think there, there are the biggest problems uh, are with uh, no chance to meet personally, which is quite complicated yes. during preparation of proposal, but it's not the uh, you know, issue for mm -hmm for administration of, of uh, Horizon program. Uh, we are uh, maintaining some uh, question part at our web page, uh, which concerns uh, most important on burning questions, uh, which are going to the European Commission. So we are trying to explain and uh, translate sometimes uh, uh, and to provide this information to, to applicants, but uh, it is more, uh, about Horizon 2020 implementation, not about uh, the future future program. And uh, but I would like maybe uh, now one more uh, thing. Uh, I wasn't aware of it, but uh, our colleague uh, who is uh, responsible for uh, this uh, widening part of Horizon sent us just a few minutes ago the information about uh, something which is called I think Hop On. Uh, hop on a project uh, instrument. So it seems to me I have not much time, have not much time to uh, go through it uh, in details, but it probably will be possible to uh, uh, to join already running project in case uh, you are as we are from low performing country as regard research and innovation. And in case in consortium is not a partner from the Czech Republic, for example, it should be possible to uh, submit some kind of proposal to hop on uh, this running project. So it could be something again, which we should know about. I, I don't know the details, but it was something I was uh, I wanted to mention. Yeah, that sounds like a very very great news. I like it. That's that's good. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you you very much for your your, your presentation. Okay, now uh, to, to proceed, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Damish, who is. Uh, who is uh, the, the director of uh, European uh, uh, European Development Agency uh, to to tell us uh, so something about uh, his uh, uh, their uh, services and and the support for us. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Great. Yes. Now uh, I will. And my screen. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin Reimisch, and I will be presenting together with my colleague uh, Stefania Pavel. Um, uh, yeah, we are uh, external collaborators of uh, the project project management department of your faculty. So uh, we are here to uh, not that much present ourselves, but uh, to bring some uh, practical information about uh, how to get involved, uh, even on a uh, uh, like, uh, personal level or on the, on the level of your teams in uh, Horizon Europe or uh, even other international projects that we think uh, can be uh, fruitful. 
So uh, I will tell a few words about um, sorry about our agency. Uh, we are a private company uh, specializing in achieving funding from European programs, uh, and we are established in two thousand eight. Uh, we have helped uh, many uh, entities from the Czech Republic and even from other countries to get uh, different uh, types of uh, funding, not only from the European Union. We uh, are uh, covering uh, kind of wider range of topics from youth through higher education uh, to social inclusion and uh, others. And uh, we have been contracted uh, by the project department that um, we uh, can help with uh, pro uh, like preparing the project applications or we can provide some uh, consultancy um, consultant services. Uh, so uh, now I will ask uh, Stefania to uh, present uh, briefly. Uh, something about uh, the European partnerships. And yeah, our aim is to motivate you somehow to uh, get involved and uh, hop on uh, the international uh, programs and uh, project opportunities such as Horizon Europe. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am not going to go into the details with the European partnerships because the speakers before me did a wonderful job to cover those topics. Um, so we would rather focus on uh, partnerships in themselves as a connection with new entities and the benefits that come um, with establishing contacts beyond uh, the Czech Republic. Um, so um, there were already mentioned the 49 candidates, so 49 potential uh, contacts and more that you can sustain across the, the five areas that the projects are expected to cover. And um, in this ecosystem, we find it um, of utmost importance to work together um, with other research institutes and organizations and individual researchers um, due to a wide range of benefits. Um, so you can engage with actors that share a common vision, people that pursue um, similar activities. You can establish new strategic uh, connections and um, the sheer um, volume of uh, partners that share common values can bring um, bigger um, achievements. You can form coalitions with diverse actors. Um, you can cover a greater range of research and innovation topics, aspects um, which your institution does not have maybe the resources or um, the, the general interest to cover in much detail can be um, covered by other entities with complementary interests. Um, you can test and experiment at larger scales what you have been working on. Um, you can create and diffuse uh, new knowledge, skills, technology, and solutions. Um, you can access world-class research infrastructures. Um, again, maybe you do not benefit from the infrastructures that you need to carry out entirely your research designs, uh, but within these um, European partnerships, you can gain access to already existing infrastructures and uh, use them to your own benefit. Um, you can boost the training and mobility of, its, um, of your staff and uh, researchers. Unfortunately, in the current circumstances, international mobility um, don't seem to, to happen, um, but we hope soon this will be possible again um, to devise, deploy, and scale up new technologies and solutions. And uh, lastly, to avoid duplications and omissions. So um, resources of any time, um, of any sort, time, energy, uh, money to be invested the best way uh, possible and to make sure that you do not overlap with um, similar um, institutions. So as a team, together everyone achieves more and um, this should be the, the motto of the European partnerships. And um, when attempting to, to build a team, um, maybe the, the members of the Faculty of uh, Science question where they can find these team members. Um, 
and we came up with um, two main modes of building such partnerships. Um, one would be accessing platforms, tools, and communities, which already host um, institutions, uh, research um, institutes, um, small and medium-sized um, enterprises, and um, also you can use our services and we can partner uh, you up with um, entities relevant to you. Um, we composed a, a small list um, of, partners, of uh, partnership making communities and platforms that you can access. Um, all of them are linked. You will get the presentation after uh, the end of seminar and you can access them yourself. Um, all of the links lead you directly to the partnership making page. So you can start connecting with partners directly. And um, to list a few advantages of accessing such communities, um, some of them, for example, up to Europe um, are very good to, to be present on because they offer a wide range of entities. So it's not only higher education institutions, but also uh, private companies, um, NGOs. So depending on the nature of the partnership, if you are required to find a partner that um, of a specific nature that you are not already connected with, the chances of finding them here are higher. Also, the platform um, hosts institutions from all across uh, the European Union and um, associated um, countries. So there is wide geographical coverage as well. Um, the filtering options allow you to look for specific partners and um, you have targeted tools of communication. You can um, message directly the partners of interest and you can uh, move very quickly the communication from the broad infrastructure of the platform to a very personal, um, direct um, email-based communication. Um, also, so the, the interface of the, the platform is very straightforward. The Partners tab um, it's the starting point. You uh, set up um, a profile, and you can start connected with uh, connecting with relevant partners. Also, another um, major advantage of such platforms is um, how easy um, it is to, to set up a profile. So the time and energy investment um, is significantly lower than, um, for example, in the um, evaluator um, for the the program platform. Um, also, there are very specific communities that you can join, which already um, have members that um, participated in projects um, under Horizon 2020. So the likelihood of finding someone experienced um, that you can start working with, or someone who already succeeded and can share best practices, you are more likely to find them um, on platforms uh, like EED um, climate. Um, also here, there are um, targeted workshops and um, work groups that you can join. So very uh, niche participation. Um, a slight disadvantage to some of these platforms um, or communities is that um, some of them require paid membership, but um, in the long term, um, being part of such groups um, pays off greatly. Okay, thank you, Stefania. Uh, so uh, you can see how the platforms work. Uh, the links we can show you at the end of the presentation. We can share uh, the interfaces if uh, you are interested. And now uh, to finish our presentation, I have uh, two slides of um, some motivational information for you, which might be known, but. Uh, we can uh, summarize it here. So why uh, should uh, one get, get involved in uh, Horizon, Horizon Europe? Uh, first, we see that the future of big scientific projects in programs like this, uh, it's definitely not uh, the only uh, source or resource, but uh, it's really available. And as Mrs. Cherkova said, uh, it should be also uh, somehow more open than it seemed to be maybe in the previous period, not uh, those uh, closed clubs of 
0.5 pigments, then uh, it uh, should be seen as uh, opportunities uh, like wider, uh, more numerous, and the resources more generous at the level of Horizon Europe than on the national level, for example, as uh, also can be uh, supported by, uh, by the numbers uh, about the budget. Uh, after that, uh, in our experience, involvement in project consortia, even if they are not successful, because uh, we have seen that the success rate is quite low, uh, really open uh, and multiplies uh, the context that you need. And there are also um, public events organized by uh, the project consortia or uh, by the program or uh, uh, by the national contact point where you can multiply your contacts and then start building your own network. And the network is um, for sure the best or one of the best tools for reaching uh, those successful projects because uh, starting from the scratch uh, could be really difficult. And at the same time, a pipeline of involvements in uh, project proposals or uh, project partnerships definitely raises uh, your chances that uh, one day you will become one of the winners, as I mentioned in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, a few tips, uh, not only applicable to Horizon Europe, but to uh, international programs uh, from our point of view. Uh, it's to uh, register in several platforms, not only one, such as up Europe or others, and join relevant groups uh, like LinkedIn groups or anything uh, professional. Uh, so you can really multiply your contacts and raise your chances. Be at uh, the right place at the right moment. At the same time, uh, we would definitely recommend to be proactive uh, because it's Unfortunately, not only about uh, filling um, a profile and uh, waiting for uh, the offers to be sent to uh, potential applicants. One needs to be really active. And if he or she is uh, contacted already by somebody else, uh, we would definitely recommend to respond promptly because uh, usually uh, the partner search uh, actions and the communications are widespread and not uh, only personalized. Uh, then we would also recommend uh, to join the more experienced entities, maybe some of the members of those closed clubs or secret clubs and try to learn from them. So really uh, try to reach them, try to join any consortia through the funding uh, and opportunities portal or others and uh, try to be present there. And also because the success rate is not really high, uh, don't hesitate to give a second chance to quality proposals, but at the same time, don't waste your time with uh, the bad ones and try to concentrate on uh, those that more chances. And yeah, this is the last slide of our presentation. Um, maybe the questions uh, which will arise, like is it difficult and is it worth it to take part? in uh, such an activity. Uh, yes, yes, but yes, it's difficult somehow, but uh, as will be presented after us, uh, you can get support from your project management department and uh, from our company as well. Uh, at the same time, there are those 531 pages, but uh, it's really been proven that uh, the rules and conditions of Horizon and other European level of programs are less complicated, more transparent and user friendlier than Czech operational programs or other schemes that you might probably know at the national level. Uh, so yeah, and at the same time, many others from all around Europe have already succeeded. So why not to give it a chance from your part? And is it worth it? Yeah, uh, definitely. We are persuaded it is. Um, now at the beginning of uh, the new period is the moment to get involved, to learn, to gain this competitive advantage and to really uh, start being involved in uh, all this process. And yeah, Roading Horizons through Horizon Europe will 
pay off richly uh, once you get a member of that uh, family. And our last tip is uh, to try to follow successful projects, those who you can't uh, hop on uh, anymore and uh, who already have a partnership closed. But if you follow them, you can try to make them part of your network somehow, get engaged in their um, public uh, events and maybe apply for uh, another project proposal in, in the future. That's it from our part. Uh, here are some contacts uh, to us. And uh, now we give the floor to Mrs. Sopochikula and her team again. Thank you. Thank you you very uh, much for your presentation full of useful tips. And also, so thank you for the, uh, the motivational no words. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Mrs. Chekova if she wants to react to the, the question uh, in the chat. chat. Thank you for your uh, answer. Uh, and there is another question related. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in case the Czech Republic is not part of uh, of the CoFund uh, project, it shouldn't be possible to participate in calls uh, opened by by this uh, partnership. But uh, I think that uh, yeah, this uh, uh, animal health uh, partnership wasn't probably. Uh, at the discussions at the ministerial level yet, because it's really uh, uh, in the future, so it's not clear if we will be part of it. Okay, I think, sorry, okay. sorry, Anna, yes. Okay, if that's it, thank you so, uh, so much. Uh, we have uh, another uh, question. Uh, maybe uh, we can ask uh, Mr. Ramish right now uh, mm -hmm. uh, because he had uh, uh, his sub presentation uh, now. So if okay. he, if uh, uh, you see see the question or one yes me? yes okay. yes we can see the question. Maybe I will let my colleague uh, answer, and in the meantime, I will open uh, one of the platforms. Um, so we do not have a specific recommendation. This is the go-to platform that you should access. Uh, the spectrum is very wide. There are the general ones, um, like up to Europe. You should be able to see our screen now. Um, but there are also the very uh, targeted specific going even down to LinkedIn groups, which are for Horizon Europe, this um, specific area, this specific work program. Um, it is a, a search game um, in the presentation. Um, again, um, it will be shared with you. You have um, that list of groups. It's not all of the groups that you can access. Um, usually finding um, a partner in one of these platforms can automatically link you to, to others. Um, it is a network-based process. So um, at the beginning, it might be difficult to start um, getting the first connections, but once you enter in this circle, it is a self-replicating um, community almost. Okay. If that's uh, it. Thank you uh, for your, your uh, answer. Uh, also, so thank you. Thank you, you, Mr. Uh, Winkler and Mr. Mazur for uh, your, your questions. Uh, we are uh, running late a little, so now I would, uh, would uh, proceed to uh, next uh, the presentation, which is uh, uh, Mine and uh, my uh, dear colleagues, Tom, Tomasz Palati. I will uh, uh, try to be as short as, as, as possible, so we have enough time for our our special guests after. <laughs> so, sorry, I will just share the screen and okay. So, uh, 
uh, I would like to, to tell you now with for my colleague uh, Tom, uh, Tomáš Palati about our uh, about our project management department uh, and uh, about the services that we we offer to to, uh, to applicants in Horizon Europe of uh, framework program uh, to be. Uh, to to tell you uh, general uh, information in the, the the beginning, we are we are settled in uh, Alberta in gen genetical garden. Uh, you can see the small yellow building on the, the picture, so uh, you can uh, you can come to 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 visit us uh, anytime you uh, you need. Uh, and uh, to to tell you very briefly, uh, uh, our, our department is uh, is offering the the uh, informative, administrative, and uh, even organizational support for uh, the, the grants uh, schemes uh, for uh, all the for all the, the scientific and the, the pedagogical employees at the, the faculty. Uh, to be more specific with uh, the schemes, it's uh, um, the first is national funding system. You you might know, I'm sure, for example, for Gatcher or uh, Thatcher. Uh, the second uh, scheme is uh, uh, European structural funds. Uh, you might know uh, operational no program, so, so maybe, and the the, uh, the last one uh, are uh, international research uh, funding and schemes, uh, on which we are focused uh, today, and uh, uh, including uh, Horizon Europe program. So to uh, to proceed uh, and tell you uh, uh, what can we uh, offer to you. Uh, our uh, support is uh, divided uh, kind of to uh, uh, two fields, two, uh, two phases. The first phase is uh, the phase uh, so before the, the submission of uh, the project, the, the, of application. It means uh, that you can contact me uh, if you have uh, an, uh, an idea for the, the for uh, the other project, and uh, also if you have uh, uh, some specific uh, plan already, uh, or if you uh, do do not have any, it's okay. Uh, you can contact me me anyway. Uh, you can uh, also uh, need help with uh, the, the proposal uh, with uh, the proposal preparation. So I'm here too, and uh, also I can help you with uh, the submission. After the, uh, the the submission, if you obtain the, the grant, uh, the best person you can contact is my colleague, Lik Tomas Palati who uh, will tell you about his work uh, himself <clears throat> sorry but uh, i can uh, i can can tell you some uh, uh, general information that uh, he can help you for example with a uh, uh, very uh, important uh, grant agreement uh, preparation process and uh, also he can uh, support you in the in implementation process of uh, uh, the project. So uh, now to be more uh, specific what uh, 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 I can, can do for you, I do, um, I, one of the, the parts of my work is uh, that I try to, to keep you uh, informed about uh, uh, actual and uh, the ongoing and uh, new funding uh, uh, opportunities. I try to do it uh, through the, 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 the faculty website. 
where I, I uh, which I uh, update and uh, uh, add some uh, my news about uh, your new course, some uh, new 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 events related uh, to course and and uh, some uh, very uh, mostly li uh, uh, useful and uh, the actual uh, in Information. So uh, uh, you can see uh, there is a link. Uh, the, the websites are in uh, uh, Czech and in uh, link uh, in uh, no English. And for the English version, you must be uh, logged in on the websites. Uh, the Czech uh, Czech version is uh, open open publicly. And uh, the second way I, I'm trying to to keep you uh, informed you might notice i i uh, i send uh, every two weeks a newsletter which is, is uh, including some uh, information about uh, the new calls and uh, opportunities and and some um, events uh, the the other part uh, of my work is to to support e ERC and uh, Marie Sklodowska Curie action, action applicants. We do it with uh, my colleague uh, Lida together, uh, and, and she uh, uh, also so, uh, already told you that uh, to these uh, two schemes, there, there will be a special event uh, uh, dedicated to, to these uh, so potential applicants. So, so uh, you will be, be informed. Uh, now to 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 uh, to, uh, to proceed to Horizon Europe collaborative projects, uh, you can uh, you can uh, contact me, me me basically anytime. But uh, it's very good for the all sides uh, to uh, for the the all parts to to contact me as soon uh, uh, as possible uh, the best best the time is uh, uh, in the at the, the moment you have uh, already an, an idea that you want to to get involved uh, you don't have to even ha have a, a a specific plan as uh, I said and I can uh, also we can help you to, uh, to find some partners we have uh, very good contacts we will have a special short, uh, uh, tool to find it so so don't hesitate to to contact me for sure uh, I can also uh, help you in the way that uh, we can uh, we can uh, discuss and uh, consult the the specific uh, activities in your uh, uh, plan uh, uh, plant uh, application. I can uh, give you the the feedback to uh, your uh, schedule, Gantt chart, uh, activities, outputs. And so uh, uh, we can have a, a personal meeting or, or we can, can uh, have, have a Skype, Skype uh, together also so with uh, uh, your partners. It's, it's up, to, up to you how much, how much uh, support you, you actually uh, need. Uh, I can... I can help you also with uh, administrative uh, for support uh, in uh, the, the, the process of uh, submission. The thing is that I can uh, get for you, for uh, example, the mandatory uh, 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 attachments, which you, you might need, uh, for uh, example, some letters of commitment or, or, or some uh, more different ones. And uh, I can help you with, uh, with a, a submission on the funding and the tender support which is mandatory in Horizon to, to use for uh, this uh, submission. So, 
I can uh, help you with registration and and and, and also with uh, with getting uh, oriented in the the portal. And uh, uh, last but not uh, least point is that I can uh, I can uh, uh, if you have. Uh, some questions uh, if, if anything is uh, unclear in the the work uh, program in the call in in any other their documentation uh, you can contact tag me and i can uh, uh, save your time and uh, i can find out uh, the answers answers for you so you don't have to make uh, any call uh, you, you you don't have to write uh, emails and i can uh, uh, ask at the, the, at the uh, directorate or in the the, the the technology g center for you and keep you uh, 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 informed and you will will uh, save your your time for for uh, your writing the proposal and your research. So uh, after the submission, there is uh, yes, uh, something like a waiting phase. And uh, if you you obtain the grant, you you after you have to contact my colleague uh, uh, Tomas. And I'm now giving him the floor and thank you for your attention. Yes, I'm sorry, it took a time to prepare a presentation to share screen. So thank you very much, Clara. Uh, uh, we are approaching uh, to the very important uh, moment of your project uh, life cycle. And I must say very pleasant one. Uh, we always look forward to the moment when you uh, receive email message starting by words we are pleased to inform you that so it means that you are you are so successful and after many many congratulations we can move to next phase so-called post award phase and it's my turn and i can take over uh, the support of our department the first thing uh, we, which we have to do at this moment is to prepare the grant agreement for signature uh, this is face some details of 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 formal proposal can be modified sometimes the european commission need to uh, state more precisely some details in the description of action they see. So the whole process of, of, of uh, grant agreement signature is, is uh, performed uh, via electronically via uh, uh, funding and tenders portal and then sign it also digitally by appointed uh, representative for European Commission and uh, our so-called L sign, it means the legal signatory, which means uh, our, our dean, case of the property. So uh, then I will ask you to, to, to add me to the consortium, uh, uh, project consortium, at the uh, funding and tenders portal, and I will use all my experience to help you to prepare all data 
and all documents uh, needed to, to be loaded to, to the participant portal and to communicate some some uh, issues with the project uh, officer if necessary so during the implementation of the project we will provide budget and financial supervision which uh, means for example to help you with the preparation of, of periodic and final uh, financial reports to uh, say strictly in the European uh, terms financial statements and we will give you also the whole uh, administrative background support it means that uh, you can uh, consult all possible questions with your project managers and uh, we will help you to communicate with other deans office departments course involved because of course the for example ec economy department and human resources department uh, take 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 part in the pro project implementation too of course uh, our our task is also to communicate as also clara mentioned to keep you informed about some some possible uh, changes in the framework program and so on and uh, to 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 communicate with our our czech uh, uh, national uh, conduct which, which means uh, the technology center of the czech academy of science okay so the czech republic mm. so uh, we will try to inform you to to keep informed about all, all uh, news about the the uh, informative events held by DC, uh, for example, and so on. So maybe let me take the opportunity to appreciate highly the cooperation with the technology center with our national contact point, which is uh, very, very useful and uh, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Sorry, no more experience with this. The... Oh, yes. Oh, no. It's over next. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clara. I'm very sorry because I have you know, so much experience with online conferences. Sorry. So let me touch another other topic, uh, which is also important concerning the horizon Europe. It means the uh, data management. Because uh, uh, those of you who have experienced with the age 2020 projects uh, know very well that uh, the, the scientific outputs of, of, of projects are uh, Things strictly the publications is is only in 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 the open access mode is accepted in Horizon 2020. Uh, so maybe there, there is a because there is a dis distinction between publication and uh, uh, data uh, and open access to to research data in in uh, now current Horizon 2020. And it means the publication are uh, uh, open access is obligatory in Horizon 2020. Uh, unlike the, the data, because the Commission is 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 running the uh, pilot, um, a flexible pilot in Horizon 2020. So called uh, open research data pilot, which aims to to make a research more uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So the acronym FAIR, as you can see in the presentation. So it means that there is a difference uh, in, Horizon, in Horizon Europe, because uh, the, the similar, uh, similar principle is used 
uh, SSS for publication in Horizon 2020 will be used for, for data, uh, data management too. Uh, of course, the, the, the um, a good uh, the data management is, isn't a goal itself, but uh, it is used as a tool uh, leading to, to um, subsequent data and uh, knowledge uh, integration and uh, reuse. So it means that it's it's uh, of course very important uh, to know better the principle and to use how to obey this new obligation concerning the scientific data. Uh, even in the pre-award uh, phase, is necessary uh, to uh, that the, the data data management costs should be taken in, into account uh, in, in creating your, your project budget. Uh, so let me therefore invite you to the next, next informative uh, event uh, held by our faculty, which is planned uh, for uh, uh, in, the, in the second half of March and is directly focused on, on this topic. It means the data management, the data management plan. So, so if we try to summarize our mutual needs, uh, what we uh, would like to provide or exchange towards each other, we can describe it as Follows. It means that what we need uh, from your side is we need the first, please, information in time, information about your plans, and uh, information that you, you are interested, of course, which, which shopping and so on. And uh, it's made as a point for discussion is what do you as applicant need for from our side? Uh, and to, to say it in few words is what can we do uh, to enhance the cooperation is to communicate, cooperate and share our our so maybe uh, uh, yes uh, 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 I so I, I, will, I will sorry Okay. Okay. Thank you uh, very much, too much for for closing our representation. Here you have uh, contacts on us, and uh, really don't hesitate to to write an email or call. Okay. So to to proceed, uh, I can see in your chat some some uh, little discussion. I think. It's a uh, it's, uh, it's uh, targeted uh, to to one person, Michal. So uh, or or I'm sorry, uh, Martin. Uh, so I I don't think we have to uh, discuss it uh, here. Uh, or if Mrs. Sistrykova wants to 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 share share something about these uh, questions, you can uh, take a word and and. Um, I think I don't <laughs> uh, take your time. Uh, it's already uh, I have already wrote it in the in the chat. 
Okay. About, so it, it's, it concerns uh, cluster two focused on culture, creativity, and inclusive society. So I'm not sure if it is uh, interesting for all our audience. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, you, you very much. And now I would like to to, to welcome our two, two special guests uh, to uh, consortia ya grant ho holders uh, first of them is uh, sir, sir professor sortahetsi so please uh, you can start if you're ready <laughs> okay could you hear me <clears throat> i have some somehow problem with uh, with the video but i hope you will see my screen Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, try it now, please. Uh, do it you? Sh I should work. Uh, yes. Yes. So at least you hear yes. me. Mm -hmm. The camera somehow doesn't okay. work, but uh, you can see the presentation, right? And my voice. <laughs> okay. So yes. first of all, I would like to thank organizers to, for their kind invitation, and uh, I feel, in fact, kind of uh, commitment to. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to, to talk about our pro project, which we happily uh, received uh, several years ago, two years ago, actually. And uh, we applied for, for quite a specific program, which was all, all already mentioned by uh, Lida. Uh, and it was a program uh, which was launched in 2016 and 2017, uh, spreading excellence and widening part participa participation. Uh, this is uh, the, this program is in fact is not devoted uh, to to do, to run really research, uh, but uh, to increase uh, your <clears throat> professional knowledge, and uh, to, because at the time and as in fact still uh, <clears throat> it was focused for uh, for several countries or the countries which were so called. But uh, uh, because it's uh, included now also Italy and uh, and uh, uh, I think Portuguese and uh, Spain and uh, the aim was to really uh, uh, help these countries to participate more frequently on the horizon or the big programs to increase the uh, let's say excellence or the, the professional knowledge and uh, also to get experience uh, how to manage the programs. Uh, how the how the uh, system of Horizon works, uh, what is the all the administrative around uh, to have also experience in this part uh, to be able to apply for the the big grants like uh, what what uh, um, <clears throat> our colleagues was talking about uh, just before just, just now. Uh, so the twinning program was uh, uh, for the twinning programs you need at least two partners and uh, the applicants must be from these member states which are, which are, uh, which are only eligible and all the associated countries. And uh, you need at least two partners from so-called excellent or, or high-performing countries like uh, let's say Belgium, uh, France, uh, UK and so, so, so on. It was for three years, and the maximum uh, contribution was about uh, one million euro. So this uh, uh, this money, as I said, are not money for benchmark. It's for uh, to organize exchange of students. It's exchange of uh, nice speakers to your institution <clears throat> to participate on. Uh, nice courses like uh, EMBL courses uh, and uh, so on, uh, so on. And uh, I did, in fact, uh, two attempts. And uh, the first one was uh, in 19, uh, uh, 2000, 2016, I think. And uh, that time uh, we named it Molecular Microbiology Modern Approaches. And uh, that time, in fact, I have no 
uh, much support. Uh, I just uh, read uh, the documents concerning this uh, this uh, type of proposal or programs, and uh, the only person who can who who, <clears throat> who helped me was one person uh, from uh, from uh, rectorate. Uh, she was just working under Rector Rovna, and uh, she was very nice person, and she helps me as much as uh, she was able, but she has about the same experience as I have, uh, and I have no experience. So it was really, this program, it was really difficult to, to, uh, to set up. Nevertheless, we, uh, we find good partners, or we had a good partner that was uh, our big advantage from the beginning, uh, because we have good contacts uh, with the Catholic University of Leuven, for example, which is really number one with EMBL and Oxford Brookes University and the University of Oxford. Uh, and uh, the program was, uh, uh, was um, in include various uh, type of activities in proteomics, uh, in, uh, uh, micro, uh, in microscopy, electromicroscopy, fluid cell microscopy, really top techniques. However, it was not really focused. It was too wild. And uh, also because I have no experience in this, uh, it was, uh, we focused mainly on the scientific uh, part of the project, uh, but uh, not for, for the others. So, so not surprisingly, actually we get uh, in a couple of months, uh, the negative decision of the European Commission that our program, they, they will <clears throat> announce that we regret to inform you that you cannot be funded because the score of 10 does not reach the minimum score necessary. <clears throat> and when we check uh, the proposal or the, the evaluation, in fact, uh, there are three parts of the project and uh, we got good score for so-called excellence or for, for the research part but not for the others, which are uh, uh, important as, uh, as, uh, <clears throat> as the research part. So uh, next year, I, uh, I, I said that I have to, uh, to, to really uh, do it uh, more properly and uh, to think more about uh, topic selection, which is, of, of course, key part of it. And it must be something really interesting, something uh, what uh, uh, because this program is uh, has to improve your knowledge uh, so something uh, in which we are already have experience but we need uh, some more experience to be really uh, let's say on the top of in the field and uh, so we selected in this case uh, uh, the study microbiomes Microbiomes is community of mi <coughs> microbes, and uh, we, of course, working in all uh, in my department uh, and parasitology. Uh, I also get together uh, groups from uh, from microbiology department and from zoology who are interested in uh, in uh, microbes uh, in general. But uh, what we really, uh, what was really very trendy last uh, several years is really study microbiomes. And I think we didn't uh, in Czech Republic catch really uh, the beginning of, of, of this boom of uh, in, in research. So that was something uh, what I feel is a gap really to get uh, specific knowledge in uh, uh, microbiomes. Um, so it's like the sequencing, uh, proteomics, and so on and so on. You need also very advanced uh, bioinformatics. And this is another field uh, in which uh, we are just catching really uh, the train because uh, in, in, uh, in uh, our colleague in, in uh, Brussels and, uh, and in so, so as I said, uh, the, the high performing countries, they are much ahead in fact in bioinformatics. You probably know who who ever try to get the information to the lab, it's very difficult to get actually. And uh, so this is one thing to, to have really uh, interesting topic which fits to, to the program call. And then uh, selection of partners, that was quite easy as I said, because we had a very good uh, uh, collaboration already set up collaboration with our partners in, in Belgium and, and, uh, and uh, Heidelberg. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and uh, also in France. And uh, now I was thinking how to uh, how to prepare the proposal. So what is important first, of course, to 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 do detailed study of the documents concerning the particle call, because there are always a certain aims, targets, and you have to fit and to show in the proposal that your study really uh, answering the question which are which are in uh, specify for the particle call. The second thing is because uh, the all these documents which you, which you can. Uh, download uh, from the pages of, of Horizon, <coughs> uh, they are uh, written in very specific language. The use terms which uh, normal scientists does not understand much, or it's difficult sometimes to imagine what, what, uh, what they mean by this or that. So it's always very good to consult with somebody, some successful uh, applicants who already went throughout and successfully get a, uh, get the grants and uh, the time when we applied uh, there were several application actually five applications from Saitek from Brno and three of them were funded so i say okay i will contact them and uh, i contacted uh, their manager uh, <clears throat> Zlata Novotná, and she was very nice actually and uh, she was uh, also feel commitment to share uh, her experience and so she went uh, with me in very detail throughout the, the, the documents and explained me really what they mean by this and that to how to answer this question and so on so that was very very important and uh, the other thing is that uh, as a scientist you will not be able to write the, the grant uh, so, uh, really proper, proper Who really knows how to write it because uh, we can write uh, excellence plan that's fine that's about science that's something uh, what we understand but uh, every proposal has three parts excellence impact and implementation and uh, each is part uh, also uh, means that there are three criteria for evaluation so three parts of the proposal means three criteria for evaluation and each excellence impact implementation got five points so you may be excellent for five points but if you don't have uh, good points for impact and implementation you are still lost and under threshold and to write properly impact and implementation is quite rather difficult and you need really some professional support uh, that uh, for the second and for the second uh, application, we get very nice support from the faculty already from uh, from Lida and from Tomas who, who take care mainly about uh, our uh, budget things and uh, economy part and and and, and uh, basic advices how to write it. And uh, also we find a very good company <coughs> who help us and uh, which are really professionals. They they have. Uh, history of several successful, um, a number of successful proposal. And they already went throughout several times and they have a very good advice how to write it and help you how to write it. And uh, I think that was really, really uh, also critical. It costly, but on the, on the other side, it's valid to do because uh, without it, it's very difficult to, to have a the, 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 the well proposal. And if you are lucky and, and get uh, after that uh, uh, funding for your, proposal, for, for your project, what is uh, of course very critical, and this is something what is uh, what, uh, what you have to specify in detail in the implementation part uh, to run and control your project. So excellence is your science impact, how in fact, uh, uh, what will be influence of, of running this project on different part uh, of, uh, I don't know, uh, I will go, go back to, to India uh, actually. And implement, implementation is how to do it, how to organize it, uh, how to do decision during the pro project. And of course, how to control uh, the running of the project. Uh, the, the running means, uh, or the, the control means uh, regular, 
meeting with all your partners, which is, I think, very critical and very important to have uh, for a complex project like uh, are all these horizon proteins are to meet at least one per month really regularly and go throughout the whole activities which should be run to plan to, to, to say this was fine, this doesn't work, and this will be happen next month. This is very critical for, for <clears throat> running the project. And uh, then you have, uh, again, uh, periodic uh, reporting uh, to the website that was mentioned also by, uh, by Lida already, that uh, your project, if it's funded, has also a, a website <clears throat> on the horizon. And uh, you have to upload and uh, regularly, actually, that, that uh, the reports about the main activities, so-called deliverables, uh, of uh, each activity that, 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 that uh, you perform. And uh, it's very good to be in good communication with your project officer, uh, which, uh, which is always very helpful. We have very good experience that our project official, official always very help us with, with the project if we got uh, to any problem. So the second project which, which is now running is this uh, Macobion microbial communities uh, in uh, biological and environmental areas and system biology. <clears throat> and uh, so we focus much more. It's, it's a more, more focused than the, the first, uh, first application just on, on microbiomes or, or, and, uh, and bioinformatics. And uh, we also uh, contacted uh, or we, we included less uh, number, less uh, partner, just three in Belgium, Germany, and France. And uh, this selection of the partners is it's, uh, very important because it, it should be somebody who really knows uh, for this type of, uh, of projects. This is not the, the, the big horizon. This is the, the this twinning project is fine to contact somebody who you really knows and you have already some history of publication and history of, of grants. And uh, because the, this project, it's a uh, uh, not big advantage to get for them, it's advantage for you, and they have to be willing to help you actually. So this is difficult to find some this just uh, by advertising that you would like uh, to, to do this and, and, and uh, need some partners. You need to have contacts to, to, get, uh, to, to get a good company for, for this, uh, for this sort of project. Uh, so concerning the, the excellent part, so uh, it is about the research, or it was we, we, <clears throat> it was written about microbiomes. But it's always good uh, if you write the, the project to uh, to do some highlights to, to to headlines. What is the most important thing? And it's also fine to to do some graphs to graphically show what the project is about. So here's uh, our Charles University down. Then uh, you can see. Uh, we explain that uh, we are expert in, in parasitology, in microbiology, in the East, and so on. And we would like to study virons, eukaryotic bacterial microbiome system biology. That's what we would like to do. And uh, our partners will help us with high throughput technology, genomic, uh, transcriptomic, proteomics, and big data analysis. And all this together will have impact on, on our research, on uh, innovative potential, and so on. So that's the excellence part. Uh, you, you have to define very well objectives, of course, as, as, as usual, uh, but uh, there are specific things which we are not used to do, for example, for a gacha gram. Uh, and one thing is to really define or to, to, to written clearly, what is the challenge of the, uh, of the specific call here, the specific challenge is to address networking gaps and uh, deficiency between the research institution and so on. And you have to answer for this. So how we do this, how we answer this, uh, uh, this challenge, which is defined in the program. Uh, the other thing, uh, what is important to have good thought analysis, something what uh, maybe once have tendency to underplay, uh, but which is very important to, to, to do uh, not formal, but real thought analysis, which is means strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. 
strains. What we said, we are good in, in microbiology, so excellent condition for research in new laboratories. We are sitting in Biotep, so we have new infrastructure, so we also focus on this. And what is weakness? Limited history of, uh, of joint international grounds. That's exactly why we are applying actually for, uh, for training program. Opportunities, increase excellence and threats, competition from national research team. That time we didn't know about COVID pandemics coming. So that would be very good uh, in fact, uh, trust, uh, which really affected now very badly our, our, our project. Now, was the part in which we define what uh, what uh, we would like to do really the, this research which will be improved so we show that we are really uh, we will work with our partner or certain project uh, research project which is funded from other sources and to do so we will perform these specific twinning activities transfer of how home how no know how technology uh, and this will be somehow accomplished. And for each aim, we define who is principal investigator, who is collaborator, and what is, uh, which activities we will perform uh, for such a project. Uh, then there are linkage and complementarities, for example. So that's what I said uh, already before, that it's fine to show that your partner, that there is some history already with your partners, uh, common previous uh, application, successful application, uh, previous publications. And then you, you have to show how your, your, your project you know, fits to the strategy of your institution, to uh, regional um, uh, priorities. Uh, so I would say because it's in central Bohemia region. So we have to show how it fits to the uh, research uh, innovation strategy of, of uh, Central Bohemia region. We have uh, we had uh, in fact advantage because when we build Biota, we already had good relationship with um, uh, regional uh, regional authorities. So so we already uh, have uh, some, some contacts for this quite well. So we were able to get really uh, the papers from uh, Central Bohemia from Western. Uh, uh, um, major uh, that they support even these local authorities that we will do run such a project uh, uh, in, at the university or part which is uh, in Biotech. There are also things like gender, even gender, uh, which which uh, one may think it's not important. It is important, very important to write uh, correctly in a such type of proposal, not formally, but to say that uh, we would like to to have i don't know increased percent of of uh, women as a pi and be specific 40 percent for example or something uh, not just to, to be general uh, the same the, the other thing that uh, we have uh, kindergarten in west uh, so devoted for for people working in biotech so right things like this which are specific it's uh, it, it's clear uh, support and it's not formal it's it's real so that's the, that was the excellence part, the impact part. Uh, you have to show or, or discuss in, in a, again, not formal, but uh, some intelligent work, uh, scientific impact, which is easy for, for scientists, of course, but industrial impact, uh, which was not, not so difficult for us because uh, Biotech is situated in a so-called uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, star region, there is a number of, of different companies around uh, like uh, uh, like um, Xbio, Xbio and, and others, Apronex, and we are really communicating with them. So, so it was quite easy to, to write this part, education impact, technology impact. So we wrote which technology we would like to learn and establish at, uh, in our laboratories, social impact like uh, more opportunities for, for local people to work as like technician or whatever. Uh, and uh, then are measures to maximize impact, uh, exploitation strategy, dissemination strategy. Uh, so all this part, it's, it's, uh, it's good to, to really to think about it, not formal, but of course, these are the exactly part 
which uh, you as a scientist uh, may, maybe you feel very difficult to find and for which you, you have some uh, really professional consultants who will help you. So uh, they, they will show you how to, how to, how to write uh, like uh, dissemination, uh, <clears throat> how to, to do data management, uh, you see here. Is this um, scheme, uh, Lida Sochkova at the time did it for us, and uh, how your publication will be published it, uh, the, in all horizon, it should be open access a publication. Then you have data that you don't want to show immediately and that are deposited to so some, some, uh, some databases for, for sequencing, for proteomics. So, so all these you have to specify in the, in, in the impact, uh, impact uh, part. And finally, implementation, that's the part uh, where you specify your work plan, your work packages. So we define six work packages for training that was uh, uh, for exchange of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, no, that, that was for sending the people to, to different courses, like we already sent it 15 uh, uh, students or 15 uh, PhD students to MBL courses, which are really great and very, very nice uh, knowledge transfer. It, it, uh, it uh, means uh, the exchange between specific laboratories to learn specific techniques. Professional growth are the activities, activities like uh, invited speakers, uh, inv invitation of, uh, of expert to to the committee for PhD student, students or defense of, of uh, defense of, of a PhD and things like this. Workshops, so that's clear. And specific uh, uh, work packages also for dissemination because we have to, to that's things like uh, that we organize web page uh, or, or communication with TV, communication with radio. And for this, you really need somebody who will do it because it's a, you cannot do all these activities as a scientist. And a specific very package for management. And the ideal thing is if, if the company or people who will help you with application, if you are funded, they will also take care about the running of the project and every reporting. And that's what, how we are doing this. This is just example how how looks our our web page uh, uh, about uh, the so, so you all every event which uh, which we are running after this program program have uh, some some notes and web page and you can click and see the pictures you can click uh, to see some abstract about the, the invited lectures and and uh, all these activities. What is uh, really important is uh, this timetable, this uh, gun chart where you specified very clearly. Uh, which course when will be when will happen and when you have deliver your report about uh, excuse me about uh, uh, about uh, your activity because this will be or this will appear if you are funded on the website of your project and you have here uh, after each uh, uh, when when each of of this of uh, these activities happen it's 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 done. You have to report it. So this is the page when you report, you submit, and uh, which is here submitted. For example, uh, package two, and uh, the otherwise uh, package one is already approved of your official. Uh, if you are in red, that's not a good sign actually, because that's uh, it. It means that your activity so was not done in in uh, in uh, in the term. But uh, that's happened for, uh, to us several times actually because of, of uh, coronavirus. So we, we, we exchange uh, or we consult this with uh, our project uh, official. So it's okay actually because we can extend the, uh, the project and uh, so on. And very important, it's also this management structure to, to really give clear management structure. And this is really important because uh, uh, for such a uh, project that you have three, four, five uh, partners, you need really have the system how to all 
activities you promised. So we have a general assembly, which are members of the partners. I'm coordinator. Then we have project manager. Uh, we have a project steering committee, which are all heads of, uh, of work packages. And each work package has uh, several tasks. And we have defined task leaders who will really take care about the certain activities will happen. We will organize it. So this is also not formal. You have to take also attention if you are coordinator such a program to, to do well. And uh, then the project, there are resources to be committed. Finally, uh, member of the consortium. So there are some CV. It's fine to have the standard format uh, and, uh, and uh, to be really uh, short, not really, really big. And uh, finally, ethics and security. And even this you have to take care because, uh, for example, So for the first, we had to correct when we were funded and show that even we are not using, uh, I don't know, uh, we are not running the experiments, I, we still will, show, will use some data from this. And these data were generated uh, using, I don't know, animals or, or, or radioactivity. So it's always good not to, to wait, but uh, already when you, before you submit uh, the proposal to have all or these formal things like ethics uh, that uh, you are authorized to work with this and that. And then you can, if you are lucky, so we are funded. And uh, I have to say that our project, uh, well, very well, actually, we are very happy with it. But what's happened is really this coronavirus problem and we stopped the activities because uh, we are really dependent uh, on, a, on, a, on a wet work at the bench. And it's quite difficult to do this remotely. So even we promise or we had to change something remotely. So now it seems to be that uh, we have to stop the project for a while. And uh, we hope that uh, we will be able to open again after maybe six months. So I hope that I was not too, too long. <laughs> uh, and with the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Professor, for your uh, for uh, sharing your uh, experience and for your very useful uh, 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 advices for uh, uh, the proposal so preparation that that was uh, very, very important. And uh, now I, uh, I would like to ask our uh, guest, Mr. Stich, if he could share with us his surprise. Uh, presentation and tell us uh, something uh, about his uh, project Pulchra. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, I hope that you are able to hear me and and just yes. give me uh, just a second. I will share my Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so, yes, I hope you are able to see the screen. So thank you for invitation to this workshops and I prepared uh, two presentations uh, about my experiences with EU projects, uh, just uh, to, how to say, to present uh, my, background, but mainly uh, to, to present my experiences and my remarks with the projects. And I hope that I would give you some uh, advices and share uh, sharing with uh, you uh, about my experiences. So my name is uh, Przemysl Stich. I am from Department of Applied Geoinformatics and Cartography. And in this department, we are focused on remote sensing, earth observation, geoinformatics, cartography, and uh, how to say modern methods as a programming, geodetic uh, survey and methods. And I am leader of uh, research team is called Earth of uh, EO for landscape, EO, so it means Earth observations, uh, land use, land cover, and 
as well our main uh, activities or our favorite activities are capacity building and educational uh, activities in geoinformatics and earth observation so maybe just shortly what is earth observation earth observation is the monitoring of uh, earth uh, using the satellites, uh, drones, and so on. So the systems is uh, very complex from uh, the creations and development of uh, satellites, but as well the processing of data and end user part are very, very important in, in this Earth observation systems. Uh, so we acquisit data about changing in the, in on the earth, but as well uh, developed some uh, methods about how to process data and we should be in uh, touch with end users in, in decision makers because uh, these informations are very important for, for uh, how to say, to mitigate climate changes and so. So I can say that in my career, in my field of interest is laying here in processing data, but uh, during my how to say career, I I always try to be in touch with uh, with end users and uh, how to say stakeholders of of uh, this uh, system. And uh, and uh, additionally, uh, I am I could be very happy that Earth observations is uh, very very supported by EU because of Copernicus program. The Copernicus program is one of the largest data program for monit environmental monitoring. So European, the, the main goal is the European response to the global needs as to manage the environment, mitigate the effect of climate change and to, to ensure civil security. So that's, I think it's how to be uh, starting positions, uh, what I, I would like to say at the beginning. And now uh, I maybe I maybe for, because that, that's uh, the point that I, I have been invited to, to this uh, uh, workshop. I would like to uh, say some uh, words about my projects uh, that I, I am, I am uh, solving now uh, some international project, but uh, as well, I used to, I used to be part of, uh, of the seven framework uh, projects uh, in, in the past. So now I am, uh, and my, the, my team is part of the Pulchra uh, project. It is a project uh, in Horizon 2020. It is uh, focused on uh, science in the city building, participation of urban learning community hubs through research and uh, activation. And uh, as well, one, one project uh, ongoing is uh, Copernicus user uptake, is user uptake uh, project uh, in, uh, com supported by commissions. And, that there is mentioned two projects uh, in from the past uh, that was the project uh, seven framework program programs that was uh, similar programs like this now uh, horizons projects and uh, as well we uh, in in the part of our observations educations and capacity building uh, i i'm part of uh, some international project not in horizon uh, framework back, but Erasmus plus uh, or, or uh, some, how to say, contracts with ESA or, or uh, different international, international institutions. So my experience are not as a coordinator of, of international projects. I, I have been always a partner of the project, but uh, uh, how to say partners of uh, several, several projects. Uh, yet so i can say that i'm i'm not our how to say average uh, budget uh, uh, is it was uh, not less uh, not not more than 50 50 000 euros per year so that that's important to to realize that that's in this dimension so my 
experience and presentations. It's uh, from uh, how to say view of partner of, of this project. So maybe just uh, some examples of this project because sometimes people could be uh, surprised uh, what what uh, European uh, what European uh, projects uh, solves uh, that it is not uh, how to say clearly um, scientific but uh, they 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 have a wi wider wider range of uh, of topics for example uh, this projects Geonet Cup and EO Power. Uh, that was uh, projects, uh, I can say that the main role was the bringing science and research into practice. So our uh, task was uh, to, to have uh, some uh, quick win project to, to, to do research uh, with, uh, with end users and uh, show some uh, success stories in different, in different case studies. Uh, how science and research is useful uh, for, for some end users. And as well, how is important science for economic development and uh, how could be capitalized uh, the, the uh, results. So the main, main methods was the promotion, capacity building uh, needs, uh, quick win project, as I mentioned, and as well, marketing and access portal for uh, success stories and data in Earth observations because uh, Earth observations uh, they are a very powerful tool in uh, in uh, monitoring uh, environmental monitoring, but uh, there is not common that is using still. And now uh, about uh, project Pulchra. Pulchra is ongoing project Horizon 2020 and uh, Charles uh, University is a part and uh, Pulchra is, uh, is a project that explores the open schooling concepts uh, in the team cities as a urban ecosystems. It is, the project is uh, from a, a program encourage citizens to engage in science through formal and informal science educations and one of most important method is so-called city challenges that uh, how to say the main main aims is the build good scientific knowledge and promote uh, the expert and community participations and how to say to to encourage active engagement in a shared living environment and futures. So that means that uh, as well that, uh, sh that there is a consortium that so-called open activities that uh, should meet the scientists, introduce science in the city, approach the city as an urban ecosystem. So that, that's collaborations of uh, scientists, uh, teachers, students, and decision makers. And, uh, uh, last uh, mention, uh, last mention project. It's uh, so-called user uptake uh, project that, as well, is uh, strongly supported uh, topic of uh, European Commission. Uh, so that means that uh, the main role of this project is the uh, how to say the. Uh, Building user dialogue uh, to uh, to create an applications that that uh, that will have impact on uh, on real life. Uh, so that as well to to create some innovations and uh, bringing this innovation uh, in the in the life. So it means that that the end user will uh, start using this innovation. So objectives is uh, to promote in the first uh, time the first foster the development and competitive European space and uh, service industry and uh, how to say implement it in, into environmental knowledge uh, and and users. So that that's all. So finally, uh, that's uh, of, that's what I should say and some. Uh, share with you some remarks and uh, advices. I think that's important if you would like to be involved in, in, the, in the international projects. 
I think it's very important to think and act international uh, from the beginning of your career. So uh, try to gain experience uh, in the international field and try to uh, create a network of collaborators. Uh, don't wait for some future or this, but really try to do it. Uh, if you are young, you are a very good chance uh, in mobility, in, in, in your, in your personal life and you you should be really uh, reliable and team working persons that's very important that uh, you you should be known that uh, you are responsible reliable and you are able to uh, to working in team so as well i think it's important that uh, you should try to solve your field of interest in broad broader dimensions uh, to be touched in stakeholders and users and cooperation try to cooperate uh, with with private sector state sectors and create some your networks uh, in in your field of interest so uh, and of course it's good to have some awareness uh, about the international uh, project calls and don't hesitate and bringing uh, your ideas and proposals actively really uh, don't that's as well very very important part of uh, this uh, this uh, project and uh, don't be afraid uh, to start an international project uh, in my in my experiences and op opinions sometimes there could be a higher chance to get support uh, uh, from international project that in some in some cases of domestic projects yeah so so and uh, and as uh, Professor Tachesi said, uh, don't hesitate and contact faculty project unit departments. Uh, now they are very, very good and very professional support uh, in, in our faculty, in university and in the, in, from other institutions in, in Czechia. So, and if uh, what is recommendations in in projects if if the preparing and the main uh, role or very important role is the main coordinator because they they really would um, would have a lot of uh, a lot of key roles and the managements and very very important is that uh, the idea of this project must be closed and uh, and uh, the partners must must believe that this idea don't uh, don't uh, write project just for projects or uh, obtain money if if uh, the project is accepted it's really important that you believe this project you would like to solve this project and you would like to uh, successfully finalize this project so uh, in the project, but it was mentioned last that it's really important to be involved in some e European Commission strategic calls. It, it, it must be prepared some, something like stories, really logical, uh, logical connected uh, parts. Uh, so very, very important it's to be balanced uh, budget. Uh, don't, uh, don't ask. Uh, more than you you are able to to really so uh, spend and not less so that as well very very important and uh, of and it was as well mentions uh, very important is uh, the structure partners uh, from geopolitics and institutional view and uh, very very highly recommended recommended it's uh, that you you in the project you will be it will be input uh, some recommendations, sign recommendations of stakeholders, uh, important persons. And uh, finally, final slides. If if you if you are involved in the projects, uh, try to think, uh, try to think uh, what will be what happen when project is over. So try to really be in in a actively in the project create uh, create uh, network and uh, start and uh, try to be success uh, success part of the project so that's important uh, to be very good uh, create the team uh, 
the delegate delegate the role in the team on management administration research very good is uh, to have some good structure of collaborators phd student academic staff administrative support and really uh, try to uh, that that project is really chance uh, that uh, you you can you can uh, continue in 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 the in international international uh, network so not don't uh, uh, solve a project just for financial part uh, really try to be try to take as a as a uh, strategic part so and uh, actively present project results and again uh, don't hesitate and uh, and really ask and uh, collaborate with uh, administrative and project department of faculty that it's really very good support and uh, I, in my opinion that it's not not so bad not so uh, time it's time consuming uh, to to how to say to Mm, uh, to be part of uh, solve this project, but uh, not not so uh, not so difficult. Uh, so that's uh, all from my side. And if you have uh, some some uh, question uh, comments, uh, I am I am open to uh, to uh, respond. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Stich, for your your nice uh, so presentation and for your kind words thank you very much for that and uh, i i hope uh, uh, everyone's motivated now to apply and i think we we couldn't have a, a better a better better closure uh, closing of our event than than this <laughs> thank you very much for that Okay, so now I don't see any, any more uh, questions. So I would like to thank you, you all who who participated in our uh, event. Thank you for all the, the speakers. Uh, I would like to to thank our uh, technical support and yeah, it was nice. Thank you very much.